Hey everyone, this is Vicki from Messy Table Studio with Art Joy Sharing for the month of April. I can't remember what the theme is, but I have two things that I wanted to show you. Um, first, let's start with this box of Triscuits, which is all gone. Um, since I like making a lot of journals and books and things like that, I'm always looking for a way to use the recycled boxes because where I live, we don't recycle the in the county. They don't have any recycling. So I learned this trick from another YouTuber. I will put her stuff down below in the show more or description box, whatever you want to call it. So let me show you what I learned from her as soon as I find my scissors. Here we go. So you got to tear the box up. I start from the bottom. Peel all this up. Eh. Easier than it, easier than it looks, right? All right, and so boxes have an overlapping flap because they're made flat, and then they have one part that flops over. So I look for the part where the seam is along the side here, and I pull this apart as nicely as I can because we're going to recycle this in our project. I don't, and I'll be, be careful because I don't want to tear any of this up. And of course, this one's not going to tear nicely. <laughs> nope. Alrighty then. Mm -mm -mm. <laughs> Never do it on camera. <laughs> okay. We're going to fix that. Alright, so what I do is I cut my extenuating circumstances off over here and I do it all the way straight across trying to follow the seam the folds in the box you can always straighten this out later with a paper cutter all right so now I still have a box shape just no top or bottom this part right here is really important to me so what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut along the seam. So now I have basically the cover for the book, right? Okay. This was not supposed to tear this way. They usually don't, except for, you know, like today. <laughs> Poo! All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this on the opposite side. I'm going to take myself one of those... Um, acrylic nail files from Dollar Tree and I'm going to rough up the side that's shiny from the box because I want to glue, put glue on it and I want the glue to adhere to it and with that shiny sealant on there it doesn't do quite as well as when you sand it up a little bit or rough it up a little bit with this. I can't get too crazy because I tore it but just give it a little rough. It doesn't have to be sanded where the whole print job's gone. All right, I'm gonna take this. Now, this is to reinforce my spine. I I saw someone else do this, and I decided, well, that's a really good idea. Now, it's a good idea on the front end, and I'll tell you why sometimes it's not such a great idea, is when you go to poke the needle through. Sometimes the cardboard is way thicker than you anticipated it will be, and you really do need to get an awl and a heavy-duty pokey tool to get it to go through. So I'm putting this on here generously, as always. And I'm going to take this and the side that I roughed up, I'm going to put flat down on here. And it fits exactly where it's supposed to because that's where, where I cut it from. So it folds this way and it also folds this way. There we go. So I glued it basically to reinforce this right here because sometimes when you have a book that has four or five signatures in it, you know, it's um, kind of heavy and wears and tears on the spine of the book. And especially if you're the kind of person who doesn't sew in um, your signatures and instead you use rubber bands, it tends to cause this to fold and it, it's not, you know, it's not the strongest cardboard in the world. I've done others recently that turned out really well. Not like this one. <laughs> this is the um, Italian 
Italian salad dressing mix and that's a good sound. Hear the difference? So this is doubled and you can tell where it was glued to the other, the other side. This is a panko breadcrumb box. When they do their seam, it's always on the wrong side because this should, should be like this with this the open side, but no. <laughs> um, sometimes when you peel these off, there'll, there'll be a small piece of paper here. We have to peel it off. This is the glue that glued it together for them. And again, you just I just do it to all my, all my um, boxes so that this is good and sturdy and it's ready. Now I may have to have a Dremel to get through there, but at least I know it's going to be strong. Okay, so that's my first tip. And my second tip was inspired by Peg Robinson. I watched her video, I don't know if it was yesterday, today or yesterday, about she did the black um, Dilusions journal that she just got brand new and she showed how she tested her pens and stuff and I thought, wow, that's a really good idea. But I don't want to do that in my black journal. Because I have so many of my pen sets and pencil sets, things like that, in boxes, in containers, this is what worked for me. This was gifted to me. And I put all of my um, Signo colored fine line pens in here. And I love drawing with them. But I'm never really sure what the color is going to look like. So what I, and it's got a nice little pocket here and a zipper here. Great pencil case. All right, so what I decided to do is take scraps of paper out of my scrap drawer and I made myself a swatch for all the pens. I wrote the name of it on here so that when I was looking for a certain color or a certain thing, it would be right here and it had the name on it. So this one's front and back. And it just folds up into accordion style. It's not intrusive in the space. I could put it in here like this with a rubber band on it, but why? I have this and I just slip it in there if I need to use it as a reference. It's right there with the pens. I don't have to look through a notebook that has a bunch of swatches in it. I also did it for these. These are detailed doodlers. I think uh, they were purchased at Walmart and they were gifted to me also. So I always keep them in the container. I mean, why buy a new container? This container is great. So. I took yet another offcut of cardstock. I scribbled, did my little scribbles here, wrote what the pen set is. The, these are like markers. And I wrote it on here where it was purchased and what they're called. Just put it in the box and close her up. And that's that. I don't have to worry about lugging it around, an extra thing. It's right there with the pens that I'm using. Again, did it with this set. These are Kaiser. Um, Kaiser Color Glitter Gel Pens from Kaiser Craft. You can buy these at Hobby Lobby in the small set, and the larger set is $19.99. So I did the exact same thing. These are glitter pens. So I took another piece of cardstock, scribbled down a little sample on it, wrote the name underneath it, and in with there, here it goes. And I always know where it is. So when I get... When I get time, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this. These are, are they called Supra? Supra color watercolors. So I'm going to take these. I'm going to swatch them like you do, you know, any other kind of watercolor. Swatch them and then put my little swatch inside the box. I can't put it on the outside because I know I will kill it and it'll die an untimely death. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six seven, eight, nine of those to do. Okay, so that's it for me for now. Oh wait, one more thing. I just thought of this looking when I was looking up. I am a lover of glue sticks for gluing things down. And I know a lot of people do this, but if, for those of you who have never seen this idea, these are brand new. Are these brand new? <coughs> that's slightly used glue stick. Is this one slightly used too? I can't ever get the lids off of them. <laughs> nope, slightly used too. That's not brand new, but close enough. So when I get down to the part where they're not new anymore, I don't want to throw them away because there's still good glue inside here. So I take a um, Sharpie marker and I put an X on the cap 
and when I save up a whole bunch of them and then I have to do a project where I'm going to be doing a lot of gluing, I whip out my, I call these diggers, I whip these out and get my little trusty toothpick and wooden stick, popsicle stick, and then I use these to glue stuff because you waste a lot of glue by just chucking these when they get down here. I almost did a whole glue book, a mini glue book, just using the glue from the little um, piece that's inside here, the pusher-upper thing. No point in wasting it. You pay good money for it. You should get every ounce of it that it says. This says 0.88 ounce, and that's exactly the amount I want to get out of it and use. Okay, so there are my three tips for Art Joy Sharing. See you guys next time. Bye.